Hi, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared, and I'm standing behind one of our rotary cutting machines, the Traveling Head model. This one is called an RC6, and the 6 stands for 6 inch pipe. So she designed to handle up to 6 inch round pipe. She'll handle 5x5 five five square, 5 inch channel, 5 inch angle, but that's the general idea under 6 inch or 6 and 5 eighths of an inch right there. Now, we have invested about two years development and well over seven figures into getting to this point right here. And what we did is we went through five different machines before we hit on this one, which is the one that I myself would want to own. And the first three were what we call, or I call, Pinocchio machines. Those are the ones where you have uh, the tubing feeds out the front of the machine. So we tried three different versions of that and um, we discovered all of the shortcomings in that design and I have a complete video that talks about why we went to a traveling head from that design. Check that out if you, if you want a little bit more information. But trust me, traveling heads are infinitely better. Anyway, this is the new machine. When I said RC6, 6 inch, so if you're looking for a machine that might have more capacity, RC12, 18 or something like that, give us a call. Same basic machine, complete different tube frame, different power heads, obviously because you're handling much more weight and um, some other features in it also, like a powered uh, motorized head and stuff like that. Um, but we can make you that kind of machine, check it out. Anyway, what we've got right here is what we learned, our first four machines were single structure machines. Um, that turned out to be troublesome and a lot, a lot had to do with the material that you were trying to cut. Specifically the weight of the material, moment of inertia, how fast, how hard was it to turn, stuff like that. So what we ended up doing was breaking the machine up into three components. The carriage and the carriage frame is one component, the tube frame or material frame and then the power head. Let's start off talk a little bit about the carriage right here. This video is just a quick overview by the way. I have other videos that are will basically talk about specific features, give you a little bit more detail. First of all, all of our machines are servo powered. We don't use stepper motors. This is what we call the XZ carriage. It's a cantilever design now. And the reason we did a cantilever design, you're getting ready to see in a second here, it makes it much easier for us to incorporate tilt head technology. So we did it for that reason right there. We could also do wood routing on it. The machine can, you could bolt a wood router right on the side of the machine and route wood columns if you wanted to. Or take PVC, for instance, and um, cut holes and shape up and down PVC. I think we had an artist ask us about that. So um, the other thing about the carriage is this system right here is called a tube, tube stabilizer. Tube stabilizer. And there's another video that talks about that specifically. Um, and it'll allow you to basically very rapidly handle half inch to three inch tubing without having to adjust anything. Just put your tubing in and go. There's a lever right here on the side of the machine that you can manually open and close the tube stabilizer or as it's doing right now, it can work in fully automatic mode itself right there. All of our machines come with the scriber and the marker, high precision setups um, in order to um, to for do your marking. If you notice also, they are enclosed. So when you're not using the marker or the scriber, the, the cover will close, protecting it from any kind of spark. These machines are notoriously dirty. Um, there's just almost no way around it. I mean, you're shooting into round tubing. So what we've done is we've used linear guides up here and try to protect them the best we can. Most of them are completely covered. But on the frame rail, which takes most of the debris, we're using our tried and true method of the round rail system. It's been working for us now for half a decade, working perfectly on our flatbed machines. And so we've incorporated that into this machine right here. Now, these machines are designed to be bolted to the floor. They move fast enough to where they have to be bolted and leveled to the floor. So keep that in mind. Now, let's move on to the frame itself. This is a 12 foot frame right here. We make them in sizes of 12 and six feet long. The, we figure the average person is probably gonna go with a 24 foot long machine. So what we've done with that in mind is the cable carriers and all the wiring actually starts on this end of the machine. 
And that way, we could take another frame extension and bolt it right to this one here and have a 24 foot machine without having to worry about rewiring in the field, which is um, a very expensive proposition. We, we, don't want to, we don't want to soak you. So we've gone ahead, gone to the extra expense of putting more cable carrier and wire in a 12 inch, a 12 foot machine. And that way later on you have versatility, you can expand the machine out if you need to. Um, okay, so let's roll over now and let's talk about the material on the front. This is obviously the computer and the stand and all. This is your, we call it the tube frame. And most of our stuff we cut is tubing. However, it's designed to handle almost anything that you can cut in this envelope. And that envelope there, by the way, is a, I think it's around 17 inches. You can see it moving in and out. And the reason we did that, we had some people say, hey, I love the idea of the traveling head. Can I do I-beam or channel? Um, one customer wanted 12 inch channel and he was gonna cut bracket holes up and down the channel. So what we did is we designed a tube frame and we went to the trouble of CNC machining the top of it. And then we drilled and tapped it. Now that allowed us to hook things like the tube support, automatic tube support system, where we could bolt it, we could easily adjust it. But it also allowed us to make a lot of different fixtures to hold different things. So for instance, for that gentleman who wants to do 12 inch channel, it is nothing more than fixtures that bolt on here with a flat side and a back fence so that everything lines up square. So he can just lay his channel down, bump it against the fence, and start cutting his holes up and down. So don't think of the machine as only a rotary. If you need a machine that's got a cut in an envelope this and along pieces, this machine will handle that for you right there. Now, as a consequence of having a CNC machine frame and all, it allowed us to make a lot of attachments, different designs. So for instance, this is four by four square tubing. Clearly, we're not gonna cut that tubing with a stabilizer or a transfer ball type system. We have to rotate it. So this machine is designed to do that affordably. That's the key word right there, folks. Um, these things can get expensive in a heartbeat. So we were trying to keep the cost down and that's what you've got right there. So if we were to take this system out of the machine and set it right here, this, for instance, is a fixture. This is a, a, a material fixture that would bolt onto the machine and you could put multiple ones on it. So let's say you had a piece of two by four box tubing, 20 feet long, and you want to cut it into some, you know, five, six foot sections, right? Odds are you're going to use multiple of these parts down the machine. And that way, as the material cuts off, it's going to fall down in the catchers and you're not going to have to worry about it. Now, you don't have to use rollers that whole way, but you're going to want to put at least something like this on it so that it could be caught, so it doesn't try to roll itself out of the machine or anything like that. So we have a tremendous amount of versatility. Another thing, too, is if you notice, these are not adjustable. They're, um, they are what they are. You know, they're keyed on the bottom so that you could just put them on there and machine it, but they're not adjustable. We did that because most machines we looked at had the scissor jack type roller arrangement. And if you do a little investigation, you'll see them. And what it is, and these, these machines typically are 12, 18 inch diameter machines. Remember, that's what this system is designed to do up to very large tubing, up to 36 inch pipe, you know? So anyway, what we did, we went to this system and we went with a fixed height fixtures so that you can just bolt them on, put your tubing on and away you go, right? Everything's easy peasy. How do you drive it? So what we've done here of the power head we've made the power head adjustable up or down. So you make a single adjustment here instead of adjusting a dozen pipe holders or half a dozen or ever, ever how many you have, we eliminated that. Now, now, all machines come with a tray right here. Remember I mentioned these things are notoriously dirty. I'm not, I'm not kidding a bit. So we have these splash guards, for instance, that will go onto the machine, just put them on, and they also have the front ones to where you can put them on the front. I have them hanging right here. Um, once you put the, we call them splash guards, but they're also will help with debris. Once you put them on, um, that greatly minimizes the mess, but it won't get rid of it. Um, so just keep that in mind. You're going to want to wipe these machines down. It's just, you know, you're, you're cutting into a piece of round tubing. There's just no better way to make a machine that'll try to disperse sparks throughout your shop than to put it around tubing. 
Now, if you notice another thing on the front of the machine up here, you've got this reservoir here. That is our optional water injection system so that we can inject water into the tubing. It's got a pump in it, runs up, comes through an adapter back here on the back. This could go on either way. We have an adapter that goes here for small tubing. This is for the bigger stuff. And you put that in and you can inject the water through. Reason for that is, if you can imagine, you fire off your plasma right here, right? And you start cutting. You're heating the other side of the tubing with this ultra hot plasma spray. So by the time it rotates 180 degrees, essentially you're, you're, you're cutting hot metal. All cutting tables are designed to cut at room temperature. That they're, they're cut for optimal. Now the hotter the metal, you're going to want to go faster because of slag. Well, that's very hard to predict. It, it, it's very hard. So what the solution is, is to drive liquid through it and let the water take out some of the heat. So these machines can handle that with the optional water injection system. And of course, it comes with all the trays and everything else you need right there. Now, let's talk about um, the power head right here. The, so we had first component was the frame. Second component was the, the tube frame. And then the third component is the power head. <clears throat> these kind of machines are, um, are, are of the variety where you can't have your cake and eat it too. And the reason is, is in order to cut, let's just say, 16 gauge, uh, 16th inch wall, three quarter inch tubing, this thing has got a motor. I mean, it's got to be fast, right? So what we did is the basic power head is designed to handle up to four inch um, square tubing, 10 gauge, eighth inch wall, whatever, 20 feet long. It'll handle that no problem. Now let's say you throw in a piece of six inch schedule 80, 20 foot long pipe. This power head will not handle it. It doesn't have the torque. We're going to either need to put a power head on it that has more reduction because with a bigger OD, you're, you're rotating slower so you can get away with that. And a bigger motor or just a bigger motor or whatever. But the bottom line is, if you slow down the head, how are you going to cut your three-quarter inch tube? And you can't. So keep that in mind also. Um, having said that, we've made it very easy to change power heads out. Basically, it's four bolts. It's all keyed so that you disconnect the wires, remove the four bolts, put the new power head on, lock it down, and away you go. And once again, the whole thing is adjustable up or down. Now, this is manually adjustable on these machines. The larger machines, our 12-inch versions and up, are motorized heads so that you can move it up or down a little bit easier. And then we have another really cool trick that's going to be talked about in another video of how we, if we want to rotate channel, angle iron, uh, I-beam, how do we do it with this kind of a system? And um, check that video out also. So anyway, um, all the machines come, complete computer, they're ready to go, they're 12-inch versions, and then you simply add extensions. Now, one thing in closing, if you'll notice, I hope you noticed, that we got a 12-foot frame back there. Now, we can't cut 12 feet of length because we have a carriage right here, so we're going to lose some length. So we're about 10 and a half foot of actual cutting length. That isn't much of a problem for somebody who doesn't have a lot of room because our software has what we call the split tube function. So let's just say you cut this piece of tubing and it's 20 feet long, but you've only got a 12 foot machine. Our software will split that program for you into two programs, use the marker in here to put an X on it, and then you use the laser. All of our machines are equipped with a laser pointer. And you would just line the laser pointer up on the mark after you flip the tube in around and then do the rest of the cut. It is not an optimal situation. I mean, it, it takes time to remove the tubing and, and turn it around. But if you don't have the room or you don't, you know, you don't want to spend the money yet for an extension and you want to put it off, that's the solution. Remember, this machine is always expandable into the future up to 12 feet. If you need a machine that's going to be a little longer than that, contact factory and let's get the engineers on it before that because it's not an issue with the frame. It's an issue with the wiring. We have to make sure that we accommodate that, that problem. Anyway, what we've got here, if you look at it, we've got a 12-foot frame, but we're coming up short right here. And the reason is, is I'm trying to kill two birds, one stone here. This tube frame assembly and that power head are the optional tube cutting systems for our multi-platform flatbed machines. 
So if you have one of those machines with an extended gantry, you are looking at the exact system that goes on that machine right there. Anyway, um, as, you, as always, our software is free upgrades for life. We're not going not gonna to nickel and dime you to death. Um, and we have so many plans for what we want to do with the software. In fact, now that we've got the machine running um, just beautiful, it's all about software from this point on. Um, tilt head, automatic function, stuff like that. Um, so anyway, um, I hope I've answered some of your questions. Oh, give you an idea here. Um, if you want to see inside, this is actually inside the mechanism linear guides and everything like that. But that's the marker system right there. Once again, a subject of another video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.